Thirteenth, Friday, twenty-first. Um, bonjour, ça va? Uh, wie geht's? Guten Abend. Uh, what else do we know? Salam alaikum. Anybody that's out there, anyway. So Friday the 21st of January, um, it's been a crazy, 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 crazy busy week. So um, yeah, got, got my new got, got my new threads on. Um, I had to I had to kind of join the rest of the world. I've got black gloves, black jacket. Oh no, what have I become? So um, who's there? Mose, I can see you. Marie, I can see you. Hello. Who else have we got? Joshua, I can see. Um, Autis, I can see. Ron's joined us. Hi, Ron. Are you tuning in for the... Um, Ron Ron sent me the most horrendous picture of his airbrush that he dropped. <laughs> Mate, <laughs> I have no words. I have no idea. That must have bounced many floors before it... Um, before you caught it or, or not. Nadia is there. Salam alaikum, Nadia. Elite Chocolates is there. Fatima, hello. Uh, who else is there? Tony's there. Ivy House Chocolates is there. Loads of people. Um, loads of people have joined us. Um, Coco Maraki. So Shelley's joined us there. Hello. Um, who else? Um, yeah, I've got new, 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 new threads on. So um, yeah, kind of, kind of to join the 21st century. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, my my wife gets really kind of. I'm not annoyed, but I, I'm just not materialistic at all. So um, and it's not cheap. It's not that I don't want to spend. I just I can't. I just don't. Right. So um, I kind of make do with the stuff that I've got very often. So. Uh, but she's always saying like you need to get this, you need to get this, and that actually she's just kind of ordered it for me. I didn't really have a choice. So. Um, but it's all right, it's all good. I don't mind. So, um, but what I was going to do tonight, I don't know how many people ordered these, right? Because I I posted a few. I posted this last night, um, and my inbox just blew up saying like, where did you order it? So for people in the UK, for everybody that contacted me, I think I sent you all the link all the links um, but it was quite a few and I really hope they had enough in stock because um, this brush I'm not I have nothing to do with Fender by the way um, and somebody said to me oh, I should charge commission no I'm, I'm not money driven so no, I'm not no I'm not motivated by money so what it was is I get I, I get two or three hundred messages for airbrush and and the only thing I can do is recommend the one that I use, and I, I use I use this one. I stumbled across this a couple of years ago, and it ticked all the boxes for me. Um, so I don't know how many I don't know how many people ordered it. I don't know how many got it or whether they received it. I certainly the few that I the few that I ordered. <laughs> there's a there's a there's there's a stack here. <laughs> Not gonna lie. And there's another stack down there. Um, but I teach, right? So, and it's nice for people to kind of have uh, multiple brushes as we're going along. Because I'll set up two, when we're doing the hands-on, I'll set up two compressors. So we've each got the same thing, if that makes sense. So, um, Fatima, you got yours already? Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's, I got that. But what I wanted to do, I get hundreds of messages saying, what, what brush? So, all I can do is recommend the one that I use. Um, it's a dual action. It's very simple. Um, it's, it's ridiculously cheap. I can't believe that they make these for that price. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm almost questioning whether somebody has made a mistake uh, because they're not normally that price. So um, it's a really, really good deal. It's dual action. Um, like I said, I've got nothing. I, I'm not um, affiliated to Fender at all. I have different brushes. I've got hard steam backs. Uh, I've got Infi I've got an Infinity CR that I use for my ink spraying, so my artwork and the calligraphy stuff. Oh, I was going to show you the calligraphy. Wait, 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 wait. Um, I've got You'll like this. You might like this, Nadia. You won't be able to read this because it'd be backwards on here. But that's some calligraphy that I did with an ink. So that's actually done with ink rather than with pen. So that's something I did. Um, that was my first go at writing Arabic. Um, that was with an Infinity CR, which is 
you know, it's it's a 0.1. You can go you can go down to the finest finest hair, but for cocoa butter, for what we do, and stand a chance, that thing would be blocked. Um, God, you'd have to you'd have to put a, you'd have to put a hair dryer on it just to try and get something to come through. So yeah, that doesn't really work. But for these ones, so it's um, I was gonna uh, what I was gonna do is just go through some of the problems that people have because I've been. I get, as I said, I get about 200, 200, 200 odd messages a week easily on uh, my airbrush isn't working, this isn't working, this is broken, this is missing, what have I done, why isn't it working, why isn't it spraying? Um, and a, a lot of those things stem back to how they cleaned it, um, believe it or not. <laughs> so what I was going to do is just quickly show you how to change the needle in this one. So this is the FE, um, this is the FE183K. Um, it it it, it comes it comes with a 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.8, right? 0 0.8 really really good for back spraying and doing all, all the stuff that you want. 0 0.5, it's nice to have a mix. I think for everybody that had the Kalani's, um, which are great great brushes, but it's 0 0.8, and there's some things you can do with a five that you can't do with an eight, and there's some things that you can do with a 0 0.8 that you can't do with 0 0.5. So as you get further into this art uh, of of spraying. And certainly, as I've been teaching it, I still learn things or I still recognise things that you can do with one that you can't do without the other. And it's worth having, it's worth running a couple of brushes. And when they're this cheap, it's worth having a few. Um, not only just for spares, but to swap between. The only other thing I'd say with the airbrushes is, let me get my hose. With the brushes, um, the same place that you ordered that brush from, you can get quick connectors, um, and the quick connectors. This brush is an is a one eighth bsi, so it's a, it's one eighth of an inch um, thread on it on the bottom here, and this little connector goes on. And actually, um, I can I can have the air on, and I can swap between brushes really really quickly. And I'll just change this off of the other brushes, so that I've constantly got brushes warm, and um, I don't need to if you. If you don't have a quick connector, you have to turn off the. Well, you don't have to turn it off. You can unplug it and risk all the air blowing everywhere, and then screw it back onto a new brush. But this just makes it very, very quick. In fact, when I finished, um, grab this. So I have everything set up on a stand, right? So as I'm spraying, um, Ron, you need to get one of these so that your stuff doesn't bounce on the floor, mate. Um, so it'll, it'll go on the stand, and then I can literally unplug it, put the hose clip the hose on the stand and put the brush away and it just uh, you know when you're really really busy it just it kind of speeds life up a bit so yeah quick connector it's a one eighth it's a one eighth uh, connector that's all it is but that's something I'd recommend definitely if you're gonna run a couple of brushes um, definitely do that right first thing with this one I think I'm trying to think how many so since the first since the start of January I think I've probably had about 20 20 people say they wash this with water uh, it doesn't work anymore you wash this with water it doesn't work anymore just because the outside is all chromed right uh, but the inside is brass uh, which um, it, it doesn't rust it just um, I can't think what the word is it for now what is the word it's not rust it goes um, it just tarnishes and then it gets all this white um, kind of plaque all over it it's only 0 0.5, um, which is a tiny, tiny gap. So it's half a millimetre, right? Um, it doesn't take much to block these up. So when you've got the little brass, there's a lug in here, I'll show you in a minute. When you've got that little brass lug in there, once that gets uh, once that all gets clogged up or that gets dented or it gets warped, um, it's kind of throw the brush out and start again. What will exacerbate that is when you get it wet. And I think the worst thing is that the inside of this this is chromed, but as you start using it, you discover that actually it's made of brass, uh, and then it's chromed. So you just wear away. If you somebody put this in the dishwasher, if you put it in the dishwasher, there are three plastic uh, washers in here, uh, and the heat of the dishwasher just melts them. So that actually, when they unscrewed it, it was just like glue that came off it. Um, absolute disaster. Um, don't wash them. You don't need to wash them. You don't need to. <sighs> You know what? Warm them up and wipe them clean. There isn't anything, you know, I've got something here that I was using today. I've got some that I was using today. 
they do get they do get messy. Warm them up, give them a wipe down, all right? Just do this up so I don't throw butter everywhere. Um, they do they do get messy. Um, certainly when you're spraying up close, you'll end up with all the, all the cocoa butter on your hands as well, which is the kind of back spray coming back at you. Um, just wipe them out with a cloth. Some people say to just put some clean cocoa butter through it and spray it through. If I'm honest, that's a bit of a waste of cocoa butter. I don't think I don't think you need to do that. I think you know the cocoa butter. There's nothing growing in it. Microbiologically, it won't sustain anything because it's just a pure fat. Um, so you know, in terms of food safety, whatever's in there when it's when it's solidified will be dry. Okay, and then when it is wet, it's still a fat. So there's nothing in there for bacteria to grow on. So don't worry about it. You know, if it gets in a little bit of a mess, warm it up, give it a wipe down, but you certainly don't need to start um, scrubbing it and putting water through it. Or somebody said, like, they put alcohol through it and sprayed it. Um, absolutely no need to at all. Uh, nor do you need to take them apart, but I'm going to just show you how to change the needle on this um, if you want to change from a 0.5 to a 0.8. This one does come with a 0.3. Don't use that. It's kind of just not worth the effort. Um... I'm just going to see if there's any questions here because I'll end up missing loads of stuff otherwise because there's quite a few people joined at the minute. Um, oh, Sandra's joined. Hi, Sandra. Uh, Lima, I can see you do... Uh, uh, Sandra, you like the jacket? Yeah. It's... Um, I, f I feel like a real chef. Um, not really. I've always felt like a chef. Um, let me... Right, Sugar Sheila's there as well. Dawnly I can see, Chuck Fine Chocolates I can see. Gosh, there's loads of people joining now. So, Constanz I can see you joining us from Germany, where they just had the world's biggest dump of snow land. Um, always fun. Um, I grew up in Germany, so I was used to. I'm used to the snow. Um, right, if I just show you. After this tonight, I will post this onto Instagram, and I will also post tomorrow. I will. I need to get back into the habit of posting these all onto YouTube. The only reason I want to put them onto YouTube, I'll leave them on Instagram for like 24, 48 hours, then I'll move it onto YouTube. Just because you can't view Instagram on on YouTube, what actually what you need to do is, is if you watch the YouTube one, you'll be able to fast forward, pause, and rewind, and do all those bits. You can't really do that with Instagram. Not that I'm mocking Instagram. So. Changing the needle on this, let's do this really, really quick, and I'll try not to drop it all over the floor, but I'm going to get, in this kit, there is a, there's two little vials, all right, one's a 0.3 and one is a 0.8, you want to take the 0.8, so these are, this is the lug seat and the end housing, and then that's the needle as well, so I'll put those aside, rest of the bits I don't really need, you can leave the cup on, doesn't really matter, also there's a little spanner in there, all right, these, do you know what I like about these brushes? All dual action brushes, there's not a huge lot, there's not a huge amount that goes wrong with these. There's not many working parts. There is a spring, there's three washers, and then normally in case you don't really need to do too much to them. And they shouldn't really bother you unless you heat this to like 80 plus degrees. So you want to take, I hope you can all see, you want to take this back. This back screw out. All that does. That's just a. Um, that just stops this um, trigger going back and forth so much when you demand like paint. So the cutaway. That should just unscrew and come off. Okay. So that is for when you you pull that one back and that will just blow through any excess. When you're cleaning. Actually, let's explain this now. When you're cleaning through, you warm it up, tip out the excess butter. Pull this cutaway back, so this little um, thing here, that pulls backwards, and just press down into just press down into a tissue, right, or a cloth, or carefully back into the tub. Just don't get too close because you end up wearing it. And as you keep spraying, eventually you'll hear the, it just the, the air change, and that's all the paint. Then give it a wipe out, and then you're good to go with the next colour, right? So there's no need to put there's no need to put all the um, new cocoa butter in there it's just I, th I think that's a waste and, and cocoa butter is one of the most expensive commodities isn't it right before you do anything so we've taken we've taken the cutaway off we've taken this screw out the back which is for um, it's a limiter for how much um, paint you can take on the very back here I'll show you a pencil so you can find 
next year is we'll use we'll use my my yellow one shall we on the back here there's a little um, screw that's got that should just unscrew don't lose that because you really really do need that so that one's going to come off okay the needle the needle very often with the with the movement of it going back and forth all right normally it just seats in there quite tight so you want to pull that one out be careful with that because once you dent the end of it or you bend it um, if there's any bend in the needle or the end is crushed at all when you use the trigger it won't come back and forth and very often if you've got air and you're pressing the trigger and you pull back and you don't get paint it's probably because the needle's been bent so put that down and put that somewhere careful and you're going to put that needle back into the old tube right on the front here there's two screws so there is a there's a protector there's a needle protector the needles not in there now if you take these screws off the front so one is for one's just directional flow and the other one holds a seat lug in right the you can take this first one off when you're spraying but if you with the needle in if you drop it and you bend the needle that's the end of your brush you need to find a new you need to get a new needle for it so I'm going to leave that first one on okay I'll leave that first one on I'm going to take the second one off okay so that's the two pieces together okay we should just leave you this little brass housing this is what you need the little spanner for right and it should just loosen right Nothing drops out now. Normally do this low down, not 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 high up. Right? Things have got up. Okay. So on the end there is this little bullet, right? And if you give it a tiny little twist, that's what you're looking at. It literally looks like a bullet bullet head. The the 0.5 mil is the diameter of that not so much the needle it's the diameter of that so that's the really really important part right so and that's the screw that came off it there's a little washer on here that needs to stay there if that drops off you need to try and get a new one try not to lose that one try and try and be careful with that one the other thing that's dropped out is the triggers dropped out because the needle oh so this is the trigger I hope you can see all this right so this is the trigger there's a little brass piece on the bottom of here that's what pushes down and gives you the air but in the middle of that there's a gap and the needle passes through the middle of that so that's dropped out, I'll show you how to put that one back in that's as far as I would take it if I was changing the needles this piece does come out and this is all the housing that's got the spring to push the trigger back forward don't need to undo that very rarely does ink come or any paint come this way the only reason it would come this way is if you lose the spring from this return housing and it's the on the top here it's just this piece that comes back and forth and when you when you push it okay so you don't need to undo that you don't need to take that out to clean it and when you look down the middle down the down straight down through it you'll see the little reservoir and when you put the needle in the needle goes through that reservoir so actually there's no way for the paint can come this way but if the spring is intact, the paint won't go that way, if that makes sense. So changing the needle then, first you want to get your little pot that's got the 0.8 on it. Open that one up. There's two things in here. There's a little chrome spray housing, okay? And then there is this little bullet. So that's for the 0.8. We'll put the 0.8 needle in, all right? So that one I'm just gonna sit that one I'm just going to sit over the top right don't push it in just sit it so it's it's the first big housing is going to go straight over the top and you're going to screw that one on okay use your little spanner that came with it well I just tighten it. it just needs to be hand tied right but it does need to be tight but don't 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 overdo it right um, it just needs to sit up against this little rubber uh, ring that's in there. So that's the housing in there. The old, or the, the little, um, the little lug that you took out. These are made of brass, right? That can go back in. 
and it can go with the very first housing, okay? So you should have those two pieces back in there, okay? Where are we? Those two pieces there, okay? So it's the second housing, so it's the second screw. The first one I've still got, right? The first one I've still got on the board here. Um, so they're going to go in your little plastic tub, right? Put the lid on, put it away, because that's now the 0.5, okay? That's the 0.5, so I'll write on there that that's a 0.5 now. Um, so you got to that point, then you're going to put on the the one that's got the little dome on it. Okay, so that one's going to screw on. That just needs to go on hand tight; doesn't need to be any looser. But as you're spraying, you need to check it. And then this is the this is just a little directional valve that goes on the end. You can spray without that or with that, doesn't really matter. Um, if you do take it off, that's that very, very first one, right? If you do take that off and drop the brush, you'll bend the needle, all right? So um, try not to. If you're doing back spraying, um, very often you get the splatter because it all collects in here when there's low pressure, right? So it collects, on the, collects in the end here, okay? So um, if you take that off and you're doing a lot of back spraying with a dual action, you can just take that one off. Just be really, really careful you don't drop it because that's, um, that's when it really, really gets damaged. I'm not going to put the new needle in yet. I'm just going to seat the trigger. The trigger, what you want to do is, there's a, let me show you here. There's a, little, there's a little spring here that pulls back. But actually, if you pull back this piece, right, very careful. This is really picky, but I pull it back, pinch it. And then this trigger needs to go in so that the gap is facing the cup. And you'll find this is really, okay. Leave that's in there and then just let the spring go forward. If I pulled that, that would come up now. So now I'm just going to change the needle. So we'll take the new needle out. I'm going to thread that in before I do anything. Pointy end is going down the back of there. Okay. You're going to push that in. There will be some resistance, all right? Tiny bit of resistance. You're going to push it in, but but if you push it in too hard, you want to push it in until it just sticks, but not too firm, all right? Don't don't push it because that end piece, the little lug down here, because it's made of brass. If you push this too hard, what you'll do is you'll open up the hole. So that when you, and if you do that and you put the paint in, or you put the, the cocoa butter in, actually when you press down you'll get paint rather than pulling back because it's just, the hole's too big, right? Um, then your little screws going on the back. Screw that up, nice hand tight, your cutaway goes on. Cutaway goes on, that doesn't need screwing on tight either. And then the limiter goes on the back there, all right? The limiter, what I do is I pull the trigger all the way back and screw the limiter in until you feel the trigger move and then just leave it there so you've got a little bit of movement, all right? So um, that's changing that and then the needle will go back into the new one. Oh, sorry, the needle will go back into the old one and that's all the stuff put away. The To check that it's all working, if you take the very, very first uh, divider, so this is just a spray divider on the front there, what you want to do is look down the end of it and just see that you can see the needle going in now. And it's minute. If you put your finger over the end of it, you'll certainly be able to feel it, all right? So, I'm covered in red paint, by the way. Uh, but, you, yeah, if you pull it back and you put your finger on, you'll be able to feel it go through, all right? So, it's, it's the tiniest bit of movement. But when the if you drop it in this state, that gets bent and then nothing happens at all. So um, that's about it in terms of in terms of changing the needle over. Um, in terms of changing the needle over, we're doing we're taking the limiter off the back, taking the cutaway off. So we're taking the it's a needle lock this one. So taking the needle lock off, taking the needle out. We're undoing the front housing, both of them. Ugh. Taking both of them off. Oh, 
Okay, we're undoing that one with the spanner. At this point, if you can try not to let the trigger come out, it'll save you a lot of um, it'll save you a lot of uh, messing around. So. So yeah, keep your finger down on the trigger. This comes off, this front housing comes off. This just holds the lug in place. Just be really careful at this point. Okay. And then that little kind of looks like a bullet. That one, if you give it a twist, it comes off. So that's the actual, that's the 0.8 bit. It's not actually the needle, it's this, right? You can kind of put any needle on it. You can put a bigger needle in if you want. Um, but the actual, the, the spray part is that 0.8, it's that little brass lug. So it goes back together, that one goes on. It's no, there's no needle in here, so we're doing all of this with no needle on the front. Housing's going back on the front. Okay, so that if I push the needle through, it doesn't get bent, all right, that's the only reason. With this trigger still in place and pushed down, putting the needle back in. If I was gonna clean it, I'd take it down to this point, all right, but I don't often do that, so. So this is just the, the needle lock. When you put the needle back in again, just put it in, but don't just, just you need to push it, but not a lot. Just push it until it's just sticking, okay? Again, if you push that in too far, you'll open the hole on the lug on that end, and then it's likely that you're turning 0 0.8 into a one mil. And if anybody's ever sprayed with a one mil, <laughs> you think overspray, if you think overspray is bad with a 0 0.8, um, the cutaway cover just goes back on. Uh, just screw it up, just hand tie it. Doesn't need to be, doesn't need to be like, you know, full on monkey wrenched, all right? And then put the litter back in. I pull the trigger back. And I just screw that in until I just start to feel some movement and I leave it there. And that's everything good to go. Um, in terms of cleaning as well, take the, you can take the cap off. Um, you can take the cap off and you can actually, you can, you can see down into this, all right? And you can see the needle moving. I can see the needle moving. Um, don't start putting tissue down this, down this here. Because uh, there's two sharp angles in there, and you'll start getting paper stuck in it. Uh, the worst thing is Q-tips, because Q-tips, the fluff comes off. Um, once, once the cocoa butter gets to it, it just kind of starts. Any crystals that are in it will just start growing around that that thread. All right, so give it a wipe by all means, but don't go stuffing stuff down there. You don't need to. Nothing bad's going to happen. Nothing bad's going to happen. You're just going to melt it and and tap it out, and you'll go with the next color. All right, so. Um, and also you can take that off to clean it, um, give it a wipe out, but don't put water near it, don't spray alcohol through it, don't put it in dishwasher, um, unless you want to buy new ones of course. Um, warm it up to clean it, you really don't, you know, if, if anybody's stuck with this, I said I'll post this on, on a little bit later and also I will um, put it onto my YouTube channel as well, where at least like you can f you can see it on big screen TV, and it's just a little bit more, a little bit easier to see what's going on. So I hope that answered, and I hope that answered everything for everybody. So let's see, are there any more? Are there any more questions? Flower and art, hello. I will send waves out. Oh, Susie Floozy, please. <laughs> Break my heart, the sewing machine. Um, <laughs> I just, Christmas Day, broke my heart a little bit. Um, Mother Baker already said to Susie Floozy, like Valentine's, like blackmail him. Do you know how I say it? That's how it is. So, um, actually, do you know what? Susie Floozy, just buy yourself a compressor. And then say, look what you got me. And then just be done with it. Because like, a lot of men will go, oh yeah, brilliant. So that, that, <laughs> that's how I would do it. Um, I'm trying to see. Adria, A plus truffles, I can see you. Hello. Um, Graphin, I can see you. Melissa Chocolate Boutique, hello from Vegas. Hi. Uh, I'm just catching up. Jackson Fernandez, I can see you. Villiers, I can see you. Baran. Salam alaikum, my friend. Um, Chris Double Zero, what kind of compressor do I use? I use a um, 
So I use a, uh, the biggest compressor I use, I use a Sparmax, it's a TC620X. However, I still use, um, I don't know where I put it. Oh, damn it. I use, oh, a big, the big boy compressor there, but I still grab this occasionally. I was using this yesterday during a lesson, and actually, um, the big compressor, if I've got lots and lots and lots to do, I will grab that. Other than that, this, this kind of works for me if I'm doing two or three moulds. Um, absolutely fine, not a problem at all. Can't really get the same uh, pressure sensitivity with it. So, you know, with the big Spar Max, I can spray it 24 PSI or 27. You can really, really dial it in. With the AS18, it's a little bit more difficult. But um, I've always said, that, you know, it's not about the brush. Um, it's about the compressor. So get the best compressor that you can find. And with graphic arts, there's always, you know, there are always the geeks that are wanting to buy the newest thing, right? The newest compressor. Because uh, these ones are, they're pretty good looking, right? Um, and whether you get the, you know, there's the um, there's the TC5000 range as well. They're quite, they're very good actually from Sparmax. But it's a smaller squat machine, whereas this is like a suitcase. Um, put the money into the compressor, not into the brush. Um, I posted this one yesterday for 20, I think it's 20, what was it? 26, I think it's 26 pound. Um, I use these exclusively, these. These are the Fender, the FE183Ks. Um, if you come across one that says BD, so that's, that's the beginner's um, model, it has a, so this is gravity fed, whereas the BD range is the suction cup. I, I don't know if I have a preference for one or the other, because I, I do use both brushes. Um, I used to spray or I used to do all my back spraying with a with a um, suction cup one so this is a little glass bottle that goes in the bottom the only thing I'd find is it's a real challenge to try and warm the butter up as you were spraying having said that if you were doing back spraying and it's 0 0.8 and there's, with the ones with the with the brushes that have a, um, a suction underneath rather than on the top which is gravity fed with the ones that are suction there's more brushes in 0 0.8 than there are gravity fed, right? Gravity fed tend to be 0.5 and under. Um, so it's quite rare, you know, to come across this one that's a 0.8 as well. It's kind of like, wow. Um, I don't think they knew, they did, nobody made these for, for chocolate work um, and they were never designed for that. It's just we've adapted them over the years and I've been using them years and I, I kind of recognize what you can and can't do with them. Um, but it's about the compressor. Put your money into the compressor. You don't need to go buying a two, three, four hundred pound brush. You just, you don't, you don't. 0 0.8 is 0 0.8. That little brass lug that was, I explained in the middle of there, that's the most important part for us. If it's 0 0.5, it's half a millimeter. If it's 0 0.8, it's, you know, it's, it's, um, it's three quarters of a, three quarters of a millimeter. Your, um, 0 0.8, 0 0.5, it doesn't matter where you go in the world, you've got to squeeze cocoa butter through this gap. We're not painting fine lines, we're not doing um, we're not doing calligraphy where I've got to get really, really fine lines on it, right? We're just we're spraying quite a wide arc of cocoa butter to cover a plastic mould, right? So um, it's not actually about the brush, it's actually about the, the compressor. If you've got really good pressure behind the uh, good pressure behind the brush, you, you'll be you'll be, you'll have no problems at all. If the brush stops, if the brush stops spray, if you've got air coming through, here's a tip: if you've got air coming through, when you press down and there's air coming through, if air's coming through, butter will go through. So you've got a blockage somewhere, and it's a case of just tracking, excuse me, tracking back and seeing where, what, and why. Um, but the compressor, yeah, it's a TC, it's the six TC six twenty. X by um, Sparmax, it's got a double hose. I mean, I can spray all day with that and not even stop. So, um, I only had the width to write the 0.5, so I mixed them all up and had to use a magnifying glass to sort all out. Um, Sandra, I'll tell you what you can do. If you're not sure with what, um, if you're not sure what needle you've put in there, right, one of the things that you can do is Fill this up with some white cocoa butter, take your little compressor outside from a distance, push down, spray and take a photo. 
because a 0.8 will come out much, much wider and a 0.5 will come out shallower. And if you put the 0.3 in, it comes out almost as a bead, right? So if you, like from, from hands distance, if you spray and let white come all the way through and then just do a video and then you can compare the two and you'll be able to work out very quickly which one's which, that's for sure. Um, 0.8 and 0.5 spray very, very, very differently. Um, very differently. So, um, what else have we got? Any other questions? Did that answer it? Did that? Did everybody get that? Did everybody understand that? With the brush, I don't know. Everybody's been quiet. Why is everybody being quiet? Everybody's shy tonight. Is it my jacket? Did my jacket put you off? Um, it's because you don't recognise me with my clothes on, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, flying Chocksman, never clean mine out, works great, warm up with a heat gun, spray all the excess butter out, saves time. Yeah, you don't, don't, don't go put in cocoa butter through it, it just doesn't... Cocoa butter is the most expensive commodity we, we have, right? Um, it's by far, I, you know, I've got, where's my, where's all my butters? That's, that's not even, that's not even quarter of what I own. And you know how much you know how much these are, right? And you know how much these are. So obviously I teach, right? But cocoa butter, I could buy five compressors on what I've spent on cocoa butter, or what I have stored left over. And then I've got even more in here, right? There's even more. All of those are full, but this is this is this is all full as well because I've got lessons all this week. So there's even more down here. There's another seven bottles there. There's probably another ten bottles there. So um, certainly when I'm doing the hands-on classes, yeah, you kind of people expect to have every colour. Well, I think they do anyway. So and yeah, we just kind of we just go crazy and spray. But spray cocoa butter through these to clean them. Don't just just give them a wipe. Warm them up. Give them a wipe out and um, use this cutaway just to spray the excess out. Uh, give it a wipe and go with the next colour. Once you've sprayed a couple of, you know, once you've done a couple of sprays, you'll find the new colour's already there. And the old colour will just sink back into the void behind it. And then when you clean that one out, they kind of replace so that the new colour, you'll spray and spray and spray, and then the old colour, you'll see appear right at the very end again. So uh, you just need to watch that the levels don't go down too much. But fill these up. Fill these, fill these cups up when you're spraying. Um, Fill them up and keep them topped up because that's what what will keep the warmth best. Um, the smaller the cup, I mean, I don't know if I'd ever. It's got a small cup with it, but there's no lid for the baby one, the five centiliter, um, and the medium sized one. You just be filling it like every, you know. I think you maybe get a mould or mould and a half out of that one. So whereas, like, if I fill up the big boy cup on there, I I can do two, possibly three moulds. So. Uh, but yeah, don't don't go wasting cocoa butter. It's not. It's um, it's just it's an expensive commodity for us, especially when it's coloured, right? The, the clear one, not a problem, but the, like the coloured ones, kind of shocking, isn't it? I dropped. Can't see it on the floor. I was talking in a lesson. <laughs> I love sharing these stories, right? So I got my holder, which is like it suckers down onto the table. Fine, not a problem. And I was talking to somebody, and this was filled with red butter flame red and my floor is you've seen all the floor in here haven't you it's like the um, it's like the nice patchwork it's quite it's a sponge floor so it's nice to walk on doesn't hurt your knees and all that kind of. anyway so I was talking to them and where I went to go and put that down I totally missed it and the lid came off and there's literally butter went <laughs> great so I had a nice cleaning day so that was just me not concentrating but, um, Chocolate pit, that's really held. It's been far too much trying to clean out brushes with an inch uh, of its poor life. Yeah, don't look. You know, I've said this so many times. The, the cocoa butter, you know, in terms of microbiological growth, there's not really much that's going to grow in there at all, if, if anything at all. Um, so it's fat, so it's not really going to support any microbiological life. Uh, I know that people say to me, I got a picture recently and somebody said, I don't know if you can see this here, right? but can you see that? I don't know how clearly you can see that. So somebody said, oh my cocoa butter's gone mouldy. Uh, and I looked at the picture and went, that's not mould, that's 
that's what you're looking at is all the crystals that have formed and bound up as it's cooled down which is why it looks all lumpy and bumpy um, it's not mould that's that's because you tempered it properly <laughs> if it was totally smooth flat on the top when it was cold it's not it's not in temper if it's all wrinkled and it's got all these like little round look like spores that's the cocoa butter that shrunk and crystallized and formed and erupted so yeah that's a good thing um, Um, Charity, does cocoa butter look better sprayed or painted with a brush? Both. I think um, I do. I mix. I mix. I don't just spray exclusively. Um, I do finger paint. I paint with brushes. I paint with um, stencils. I do all sorts. I think you need to mix it. I don't think one is better than the other. Um, certainly, airbrushing is quicker um, by a long way. Um, and there's nothing wrong with painting an intricate tonight. If anybody knows vegan, they're called Vegan Chocolate. She posts some incredible stuff, and it's they're, they're, it's micro painting, right? So um, I will I'll, maybe I'll post something on from her page actually onto mine. Um, so she does a lot of really really micro painting, tiny, dainty, dainty, like one mil brushes. She's she's painting cocoa butter, so very very intricate. But then she is spraying over the back of it as well. So. Um, I don't think one's better than the other charity. I think you can mix it up, definitely. Um, um, what else got? Um, Flo, what's the name of the compressor again? It is a Sparmax TC620. Um, on Tuesday, I'm doing a post. I'm doing a post on Tuesday. Um, so I'm not going to do it as a reel, but I'm going to do it as a video on Tuesday of how to uh, disengage the pressure and the moisture tra trap from the TC20 because there's, there's a moisture trap on the top and there's also one underneath and once a month you need to empty it because the bottom tank can actually rust so I'm going to explain that to everybody in terms of what you're looking for and, when, and, how, and how to do that so uh, only because I got a message from somebody saying like when I spray and I get water in it, it looks rusty yeah, yeah that can happen if you don't look after it if you don't look after your kit you'll break it um, Julia Ritchie, what tempering machine did you purchase? I can't tell you at the minute because I'm having some problems getting it shipped here. Um, I'm having some major problems getting it shipped here actually. Um, good old Brexit. Um, I look too professional. Try. Um, what's the warmer call for you, cocoa butter? It is a and it's Excalibur. It's an Excalibur food dehydrator. Um, it's the five grid. Turn it on, warm it up. Um, I can kind of keep all my butters at about 35, 36, around about that. Depends on the room temperature, but 35, 36. But just means I can have multiple colours. Not so much for when I'm doing, when I'm actually doing production. Uh, but when I'm teaching, it means that when I'm teaching, it means that I can just grab stuff and temper it and 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 and, and teach that way, rather than stopping every two minutes to you know. And when you microwave them from cold, <laughs> it takes a long time, right? Um, and then you know people start choosing the colours that they want, and it's like, all right, 16 colours, happy days, let's melt those and we're gone, right? So, uh, but it's yeah, it's a, it's an Excalibur. Uh, dehydrator, it's the 5 grid, there's also a 10 grid, um, don't use the 10 grid, 10 grid one, I have the 10 grid but it's a bit too big for me, it's just, it pumps too much heat up into the room to be honest, so, um, where did I get the holder from, I don't know, my twin brother brought me that, I don't know where he got it from, but he said, like, what you want is a holder for it, I've got a twin brother, I've got an identical twin brother, he has nothing to do with chocolate at all, no, he eats chocolate, he doesn't, but uh, I don't know. That arrived, and he's like, "Try using that, mate." And it, you'll start. I think he saw all the cocoa butter bits all over the floor, and he's like, "Maybe you should have something to hold that." So um, I don't know where that came from. Um, uh, Ed Snickerdoodle. So Snickerdoodle. Uh, my cocoa butter seems to be out of date. What happens to cocoa butter when it's past its date? Um, that depends. Is that a use use by, or is that a best before? If it's a used by, technically you've got to throw it, right? Because um, everything has a everything has a life expectancy. Even water that goes millions of years through mineral rocks, when we put it in a bottle, it's got a, a used by date. So technically, if you've still got it, 
um, if you've still got it. But there's some options there actually, Snicky Doodle. If you give me a shout, there is an option. There is an option to kind of do a pasteurisation so that you could re-bottle it. And I, yeah, if you, if you send me a message on that one, I'll talk you through that in terms of what you can do. Um, but I don't know if it actually goes past its date. I think professionally, I should I should say that yeah, you should get rid of it. I would get rid of it. I wouldn't want anything in my in my workshop that's past its date. Just you know, you do your. Um, you you know every month I do a date label check so that means that I will go through every single product and every single product I've got including the chocolate and I'll just check all the dates on everything um, but I also tie it in with a stock take so that that I guess go through it all but um, that's one of the challenges of having a lot of cocoa butter isn't it I think you know I will face that problem eventually that like there's just too many um, so um, crumbs Tanya's joined us. Crumbs by Tanya, hiya, um, blind chocolatier, I like a drill and sponge for spirals, yeah, don't have to, you don't have to, you don't have to airbrush all the time, you can mix it up, you can do a bit of everything, um, uh, would you mind telling me how you do splatters, not dots, I can do dots, Does that, is that with the airbrush, um, splatter is simple as, I mean I do, where's my little brush, there we go, I have one special little brush. You want a, a lot of people say a toothbrush, right? And it's, toothbrushes are too soft. What you want is a really hard bristled brush. And you want to, you want to have a butter that you can actually dip into so that this gets actually soaked. And then you can flick it. When you flick it, you get the long splats rather than the single dots. Um, it's more, Sandra, it's more that, that tech, the, the, the splatters, it's more about how much you load up onto the brush. If you're using, you know, you get for, these are, you know, you get electrical, you buy electrical goods like razors and, and shavers and that kind of thing. These are the little brushes that, that get delivered with those, but you normally throw out because you don't use them, right? Um, you'd be amazed how many people have got those knocking around in bathrooms or that they've never ever used. It's probably still in the plastic packaging. Because it's a firm bristled nylon, uh, toothbrushes work, but you need the firm ones. If it's too soft, what happens is it just absorbs all the um, it absorbs all the butter, and then you start flicking, and nothing's happening. So you load it up even more, and then you just get like loads dump in the mold. So um, I think the technique is just to load the brush up more, and then and then flick. I don't really I don't do splatter. I do I like dots. Splatter it's not really my thing. I don't like the big clean up afterwards. I just I can't be done with it. Um, I, I've done it, and then I looked at how much I wasted, and it's like, oh, yeah, I'm not doing that again. It might have been fast, but it wasn't cheap. So, um, Amazon apparently has this holder, but they're good. But they're all little tools that you know. I said, I said before, if you're going to invest, right, as in spend your money on your business. It needs to either make life easier for you, uh, and or improve profit, um, and and one will work towards the other. So um, yeah, it's it's important thing that. But yeah, the little holders, the little bits and pieces that you buy, they they all count, right? They all count. Um, so is there, are there are there any questions? Anybody else got any questions? Everybody doing really well with um, Valentine's prep. How's Valentine's going? Is anybody having problems? Is anybody on track? Is everybody doing what they thought they'd be doing? Is everybody ready to? Um, is everybody ready to go to market with Valentine's love hearts? Yeah, I got mine done finally. <laughs> I've got a, I've, there were a few here I was going to show you, but they're, they're a bit far away at the minute, so. Um, but, yeah, anybody got any questions? Anybody got anything that they would like to ask about, I suppose, about airbrushing, actually? I wanted to do that because I got a lot of, um, I got a lot of, um, quite, I've had a lot of questions recently just about my airbrushes and working. And I think, I think if you're going to reach out and say my airbrush isn't working, video helps me, uh, to say... I send a message saying my airbrush isn't working. I kind of need a little bit more information than that if I'm going to help you. So yeah, a video always helps. Certainly, if you can show me 
what's happening and why very often I might be able to get to the point very very quickly but a um, yeah just sending me a message saying my airbrush doesn't work what's happened well that could be many 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 things so and I don't want to I don't want to spend 40 minutes messaging trying to get to like help help you right so do you use a spray uh, do I use a spray box when working with a spray gun no I don't I don't um, I've got I've got so I've got netting on the on the windows I'll open the windows right up and then I've got fans on the other side not in this room but in the next room so I can actually blow air through I don't really suffer for the amount of airbrushing that I do I don't really suffer I don't really suffer the the overspray so much I think um, you know it, I don't it's difficult I think some 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 kitchens are more prone to it when they have in extraction but the extraction isn't good it, it just holds it all up in the it all holds it all up in the air more so um, no I don't know I don't use an extractor at all and I don't use a spray box at all I do put a mask on when I'm spraying big volumes and I always put a mask on when I'm spraying white um, that's really important um, so what's the other one uh, Tanya's saying, what's my favourite mould? God, that's difficult, isn't it? That's like asking what's your favourite... What, which one's my favourite daughter? All of them. Um, honestly, depends what I'm doing. Um, all my moulds, I have... Um, well, let's have a look. So, all my... Nearly all my... 99% of my moulds are from Implast, right? So, and I've got all domes, because I do domes for all my online sales. Um... And there, there's two types, so there's a straight edged one and there is the dome one. I love working with these because they're they're chunky and they're thick and they don't they don't flex and the grip there's grips underneath it which are really really good. So you don't have to worry about uh, because there's a decent gap in the middle, you can put your thumb all the way over the top so you can actually hold on to it and, and tap. Um, I've got chocolate world moulds, which um, where are they? Is it here? Um, I've got some chocolate world, which I, I find frustrating because the lugs underneath aren't big enough to get your fingers in. So there's nothing to hold on to when you're. I've got like I've got like two mil of. I'm just yeah. Um, different things. I mean these these come out. These domes they come out really shiny. I like those when I do the you know the, the cut rings uh, and the bits and pieces that I do with that one. And I've got bar moulds by Martitello, which I really, really like, the curved ones. Um, I'm not, yeah, I don't really, I don't have that many different moulds, because I don't, um, if it doesn't fit in my packaging, I don't I don't buy it. I've got a couple other ones, I've got some different ones, but they're one-offs that I use. There's some that I've been sent, there's some that I've been given. Some that I was sent to promote, but I don't like them, so I'm not going to promote them. Um, the teardrop one is one I want to have a look at, um, really for when I do the hands-on classes and the teaching, because people want to do you know different things. I, I like domes. I like domes. They're my favourite. I recognise that anything with sharp edges just is a nightmare. Um, I Tanya, I don't know if you've had the same thing, but you know, th there's some people that had the little, you know, the love where it's written in love, and there's just dozens and dozens of people saying to me, I keep getting bubbles all trapped in the bottom. It's like, yeah, it's. There's a lot of angles on that mould, so yeah, that happens. Uh, unless you shell with a four-drop chocolate, you're going to have bubbles in the bottom of it. So, um, Maria, Nicole Chocolatier. Right, so you use the you use the silk, the micro, what we call micro. Um, Maria and I had a... Maria and I had a couple of sessions, and we were talking about tempering. Uh, and Maria always challenges me with some very 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 technical questions right so I always yeah I always enjoy those chats because you 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 get me really really thinking but then we moved on to the subject of tempering and how what do I use and I use micro I use silk I've got an incubator that I can put silk in as well now um, but the silk yeah that's the first time using it for you and I think that's it's a lot lot easier uh, Maria isn't it I'm sure it's a lot lot easier um, it's taken, it's made tempering simple. You still need to know how to temper. You still need to know how to raise the temperature and lower the temperature and get that temperature control because that's really important. Um, that's important for anybody, I think, in food. Temperature, um, you know, I was told very, very young 
um, if you want to excel, the best chefs have learned to control temperature. Not heat, temperature. As in ice cream not too cold, frozen food not too cold, but hot food not too hot. So it's controlling those temperatures. And with the silk, once you've mastered the range of tempering, when you move to silk, because you know that you can hit 34 degrees on the button, because any more, you burn the silk off, and any lower, it doesn't dissolve, it doesn't melt into it. So you need to be very, very precise. But once you are precise and you understand those numbers, then yeah, move on to other ways of, of tempering, which are a lot, lot easier, but can go wrong so much, so much quicker if you're not accurate. I think the thing with micro and silk, if you want to just be a bit slapdash, it ain't going to work. It's going to come back and bite you. So, um, but yeah, Maria, I'm really glad that worked out, actually. It's nice to see you. And the shine on those bonbons the other day, yeah, um, yeah, I had shine envy of the such a thing. So, um, Bon Brule is in Argentina. Hello. Um, yeah, good point. The grip. Yeah, Tanya, do you know the grip? I, there's people, I have arthritis and I have both types. So I'm rheumatic and psoriatic um, and I've got all the tendons are literally just melting. And um, yeah, I'm in and out hospital at the minute because of it. And it's uh, biological medicine. So there are days when I just can't, it's not for lack of strength and it's not for lack of ability, but there are days that I just can't grip these, these chocolate worlds. Um, and in plast, those things are massive dents, right? I get my whole fingers in them and I can hold that and I can get my thumb under it. So I can hold that really, really well. For the ladies that do chocolate work, where these are too heavy, what I've always said is don't fill up to the last two so you can put your fingers in right so at least you can put a couple of fingers in and then hold it upside down and tap like that so that's always an option um, but yeah the 32 cavity ones are a struggle from chocolate world I would love to get in touch with chocolate world because I've got some um, there's some things that I'd like to challenge them on in terms of their molds and all right they're a big producer um, I talked to Fender about their airbrushes, I spoke to Iwata about their airbrushes and they were more than happy to have a conversation. So yeah, Chocolate World, I kind of maybe need to reach out. The, there needs to be a solution for the women that can't hold the 32 moulds. And this is not misogynistic at all, but you know, there are times when I struggle to do the 32s. So I think there's, there's women that just can't, when this is full and it weighs 500 grams, half kilo, maybe once, not a problem. But when you're on the end of doing 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 of these, yeah, yeah, you feel it. And when your fingers get a little bit greasy and you can't grip, you only need to drop one of these in the chocolate and you're like, well, I'm done for the day, right? And we've all done it. I'm sure everybody has dropped a mould in the chocolate, right? We need a grip on the bottom of it. And I wish that they would, and I understand the process of where they, they press mount them. But there is, there is a way to get some texture on this, so they've got something to grip onto. Just, yeah, you kind of need to give the stuff to chefs to work out, and then we'll tell you what we need, and then you design what we need, rather than saying, here's a mould, it's amazing. Yeah, but I need more. So, um, do you have any advice for gold, silver butters with airbrush? Seems to clog the brush for far more than others. Right, with, with sparkly, with sparkly stuff, um, spray in a 0.8 and take it all the way down to like 27 or a little bit lower if you can. Um, I'm not going to lie, the, where's that, let me show you this chocolate, where's it gone? Where is it? I've lost it. Can't find it. So one of my bar moulds had the, oh I've got it here. Um, one of my bar molds, this is a lesson during the week, with my bar molds, with this one, yeah this one here that I did the other day, I actually had to paint that one in because I tried spraying it and where I tried spraying the gold, you can see what's happened with the gold, it just went all streaky, right? So um, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, and then take the butter right down low, as low as you can get away with. Um, the problem is, 
when you mix it, the butter, all the flakes go up to the top, and when you need, leave it to rest, they come back down. So what you need to do while you're spraying is give it a good shake. That's worked for me. So, um, um, can you talk about how you find the airbrush on your stories? I don't understand that one, Missy. Oh, what do you mean by that? Cl Clara, is that you, Clara? I think it is, isn't it? Can you talk about how you find the airbrush on your stories? Don't know. Explain that a little bit more. Don't understand that question. Um, Crumbs by Tatia. Silk is the best. Yes, it is. Um, Silk is really good. Silk is amazing once you've learned to nail the other ways of tempering. Um, the accuracy that you require is straightforward when you're very good at getting accurate temperatures. If you're not very good at getting accurate temperatures, silk will be your biggest nightmare. So um, it takes, yeah, I think it's something that you move into when you've got a little bit more experience, if that makes sense. So. Um, do you have saffron chocolate moulds? No, I don't. Uh, I've never heard of those. Saffron, don't know. Don't know them. Um, so Susie Floozy, good tip. I've got MS, and some days are too heavy. Yeah, they are. Um, they are. I don't know why there is this regulation size. Um, the other thing, do you know, what? I love this dome. I love this dome one, and it came as part of a pack, right? And I question this as well with the guys at Eco Baker. Because it's got the little holes in it, which is okay because you're supposed to sandwich two together. But it would have been something like £38 or like €47 Euros for the two. Really? <laughs> and it's got the little holes in. So although I only use it like that, whenever I've got to clean it out, I have to get, I have to get all the chocolate out of these little holes. And it's like, you know, really? I've had enough of that. As if moulds aren't hard enough to clean anyway. We didn't put a hole in it. So um, Nadia's saying she definitely struggles with the 32. Everybody does. Everybody struggles with the 32. Um, and a lot of people are are tapping them. Where's my... I've lost, I've lost all my kit tonight. I had a big tidy up there. Oh, I had a big clean down day today. Um, a lot of people are putting, are holding their thing and then turning it over with two hands. Right, letting most of it drop out and then tapping, uh, which is fine, but yeah, it was kind of like you know, there was a size that they came up with, and then everybody went with that size. And I, you know, I've lost count of the number of a number of times people have said to me, you know, how my, it, they hurt, it hurts my hands, um, and I suffer as well. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really poorly, boy, <laughs> I ain't getting any better either, so um. It's it's um yeah so so you drain struggle with grip leave some cavities empty to hold on to, that's the answer is just to leave a few, um you know trust me there are days when I can't there's there's days when I can't walk uh, there are days when I just can't take steps so um yeah leave two or three or whatever you don't have to shell a whole mold right if it takes you a little bit longer it takes you a little bit more longer right so um it's not a race right it is not a race definitely. Um, but Tanya saying yeah I went off on a tangent there my favourite moulds I like domes I like domes because I like the I like shine I like shine um, so I like domes uh, because they show off all that stuff so that's kind of important to me and I like a stable base as well I don't like stuff that's too tall because in the packaging it, it's got a chance to tumble and if it does tumble or turn in the packaging uh, you, they're not going to get there in a decent state, and that's that's kind of nobody wants to open a box of dust. It's um, yeah, it's it's a tough one, isn't it? That so. Um, but Tanya, you, you like the shine. Did um, you Tanya? Didn't you have Chocolatia with you? Didn't she come up and see you for a couple of days? Am I right in thinking? Is Chocolatia came up to see you? Didn't she? Because I need to talk to you about the. I'll send you Tanya. I'll send you a message about the uh, some of the Kadzama stuff. Um, because that's on my radar at the minute as well, Kadzama. So, um, it's just one of the many companies that I want to have a chat with. So, um, what else did we do this week? I did, um, yeah, so I'm on the hunt for a new phone as well. So, I did a poll during the week, and, and amazingly, um, uh, the iPhone came up Trump. So, yeah, I kind of think I'm going to go with that. But, yeah, I need to replace my phone because, um, I bought, I had, I've got a Huawei which has been amazing, absolutely, absolutely amazing. But unfortunately, 
anything that is like a American produced um, uh, applications are getting turned off so like I can't use Google Play I can't there's so many applications now that I can't use and it's like right it's, it's time to move it's time to move back to, to something else so unfortunately the monopolies <laughs> They're not going to let us use the only phone that we want. We've got to buy a certain one now, haven't we? So, but that's kind of how it goes. So, um, right, guys, I'm going to get away. It has gone nine thirty. I think I've answered lots tonight. What I will do, I will post this onto Instagram later, and then tomorrow I will, tomorrow I will put this on. I won't do it tomorrow. On Sunday, I will post this onto YouTube, and I will take this off the Instagram channel because. I think I've got something like 68 hours stored on the huge, on the Instagram app now. Um, 68 hours of one of chalky chats. So yeah, anything that I do from here on, I'm actually going to put onto the YouTube channel. But it's under the same name, so Sassy Chocolate. So go and have a look, um, like, subscribe if you can. It all helps with uh, discovering the channel so that it can kind of be seen. So, uh, but I'm going to post everything onto yeah, I'm going to post everything onto YouTube. And it's a little bit easier to watch and catch up. So um, I am going to get away. I'll post this on a little bit later. Um, and oh no, do you know what? It's about hands at the end. Everybody's like, oh no, no, I missed. No, I do need to go. I've got I've got bedtime stories to read. So um, have a lovely evening. Have a lovely weekend. Um, thank you for everybody that had one-to-ones this week. People that bought the chocolate this week. Sold a lot of chocolate this week as well, which is... Um, quite nice in January to have that. When I say quite a lot, it's quite a lot this week. Uh, but it's lovely to have that in in the middle of um, in the middle of January. So um, have a good weekend. Bonwi, Bonwi, good Abend, Masalama. What else? What other ways can we say good night? Have an absolutely amazing weekend, and thank you for joining me. And I'll see you all next week. If you've got messages, send them over during the week. If you've got questions, by all means, you know that I'll answer them. All right. Have a lovely weekend, guys. Go and have a look at the YouTube channel, all right? Because I'm going to move everything over there this weekend, all right? Have a good one. Bye-bye.